We had hoped to achieve some clarity uh, today with the filing of the indictment and uh, Ms. Graswald's arraignment, um, but you know, that wasn't the case. You know, we received the indictment, uh, we received two charges that seem inconsistent, and so we are faced with more confusion and, and doubt as to the government's case. Um, just to bring you up to speed, count one is a charge of intentional murder, uh, count two is a charge of reckless manslaughter. Those are two inconsistent uh, culpable mental states. Um, logically, a person can't commit the same act, both intentionally and recklessly. Um, so we view that you know, as a, an, another example of the government trying to fit a, a square peg into a round hole to make a, uh, you know, a homicide of what is an accidental drowning. And so, you know, as a result of these proceedings, our belief is stronger than ever that uh, Ms. Graswald is a victim here and that this was an accident, an accidental drowning. Um, our defense team is growing. To my right, <coughs> Jeffrey Chartier, my co-counsel. Uh, he's recently represented the last two MTA engineers successfully. Uh, we've hired Brosnan Risk, New York's premier investigations outfit. John Fleming is here to my left. Uh, he's a retired NYP detective, first grade homicide detective, a uh, member of the intelligence division. Uh, so, you know, in this case, um, we've, we've looked for support from the community. It's starting to gain momentum. Um, I think people are starting to now realize that this was an accident and more people are coming back now. They're reaching out to us via email, uh, telephone, and other platforms. Uh, whether it's members of the community, strangers, or friends, kayakers, casual and expert kayakers are reaching out and sharing you know, their thoughts, which are very positive, 100% positive, and in Ms. Graswald's favor. So we encourage that to, to continue. Um, I, I enjoy speaking to people who are very interested in, in this case and have very strong feelings in this case, and the response has been very positive for us. Um, and so, you know, we're very confident that when all is said and done, that Ms. Graswell will be exonerated. What do you Thank know about the autopsy, if anything? We don't know anything about the autopsy yet. We, I'm, I'm sending the crew over now to inspect the remains, um, and then as soon as we have a, a cause of death, and a, we'll, we'll, we'll be in touch. Can you address that crushingly large fail? No, I don't, I don't think that, that that really is meaningful at this point. I mean, whether you know, she, she probably wouldn't have made half a million. So. Three, it could be three million, twelve million. I don't think that, that makes much of a difference. Why that, do you think that's the why judge? I didn't address it. Why do you think the judge said it so high? Oh, I don't know. I'll find the judge. Regarding the inconsistency, could you just elaborate on that a little bit more? How she can't be uh, guilty of murder and manslaughter at the same time? Well, a person can't can't have two different mindsets when they commit the same act. You can't act intentionally with regard to an act and recklessly at the same time. It's just not possible. And so I think it's a signal. Um, so imagine. Uh, uh, asking a jury to find beyond a reasonable doubt that, that my client has committed an, an intentional act and then turning around two minutes later and saying to find beyond a reasonable doubt that, they've, that she's committed a reckless act. Can't do it. So I think that that's a strong signal and, and if you read between the lines I think you know what I'm saying. Well, how is your client now dealing with this? When I first spoke to her at the very beginning, when she was uh, after she was first arrested, she seemed almost, uh, I, I, I'm not unfairly characterizing it by saying, it, it was sort of, she felt sort of light about it. Um, has the gravity of her situation settled in? It has, but you know, I don't know what you mean by by light, but I, you know, I'm not. Well, like she didn't quite the, understand not, the charges. Well, oh no, she understands the charges fully and completely now. Okay. You, uh, you mentioned in court about uh, not being allowed to uh, attend the autopsy. Yes. How did that? Or how did you ask? Or who you gonna well, we had sent uh, several, at least two written communications. Uh, I actually myself called the medical examiner's office. We were told that we would get a return phone call. We didn't. Um, you know. I, Look, the medical examiner is objective and does not work for the government. And so, you know, it's very common to have the defense present at an autopsy. We would like to have been there, but we weren't. So we'll, 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 we'll go from there. 